Well, that was weird. Hey guys, DMS3TV here today. I have with me a tube amp. Yeah, a tube amp. Last time I covered tube amps on the channel, it was the Knob Sound NS08E and the Bravo V2. In other words, not very good tube amps and hybrids at that. Now this is also a hybrid, but this is one of the only hybrids I've heard that I think is really noteworthy. Now, why is that? Because this actually sounds like a tube amp. So what's the point of having something that sounds like a tube amp instead of just having a full on tube amp? Why still have a hybrid? Because tube amps normally are only well paired with high impedance headphones. So a hybrid gives it the capability more or less to run with a wider variety of headphones like planars, uh, IEMs, just things of lower impedance and things that are maybe potentially harder to drive in some situations. So with that in mind, let's get right into it. So the build quality, I can't really talk about too much because this is actually a DIY amp. So the Starving Student, or Millet, um, is an amp where you can buy all the parts yourself and assemble. Now, I was told that this amp can cost around $120 to build, but depending on what kind of upgrades you want to add to it, it can cost more and more and more if you want like a nicer potentiometer, a nicer case, etc. So this one in particular uh, was built by a member of my Discord, Goffspar, who put a fair amount of upgrades into it. He said that it doesn't necessarily change sound too much. Most of it is just to increase gain and things like that. But this still is a very good depiction of what the regular $120 version could sound like. So with that in mind, what does it sound like? And is it really worth having those tubes? Because tubes get hot. Tubes do eventually stop working. They do have a lifespan. Um, but now there are bright sides to that too. Tubes can be rolled, you can put different tubes in there, get different kinds of sounds. These specifically are 19 volt tubes, 19J6 tubes, and there's two of them. Now that means if you do decide to roll tubes, you're going to want to get tubes that have been matched from the factory or from, you know, your whoever your retailer is uh, to ensure that you're, you know, getting a even sound that it's not going to be like totally out of whack. You want to have balanced tubes if you're going to get a pair of tubes somewhere. But what exactly do tubes do? Uh, well, using NFB11 as a DAC when I was testing this, as well as several others, but NFB11 being the main one, I would say that tubes are usually not extremely neutral, usually being the key term. They do color sound, and generally if you're buying a tube, it's to try and add something to your headphones or take something away. Now this one in particular, this specific amp, adds a bit of soundstage, and it takes away a few things too, but not in a bad way. So highs are still pretty strong, but a little bit more wide than they used to be. Overall, like I said, sound stage is increased. Um, and it does make the sound warmer. That's generally a trait of tubes. Tubes tend to warm up the sound a little bit. And the owner of this specific amp built it with Argon in mind. Now, Argon is already a warm headphone. You combine those two and you're getting some very, very rich, strong lows, which is why I did my intro. Anyway, but not distorted. Very clean, very, very, very rich, very enjoyable. And I quite like that. Now, wh while these do sound incredible with Argon, my personal favorite out of everything I tried with these was HD600 and HD650. Specifically HD600 though, because HD600, its performance on the highs, if you just add a little bit of warmth to it, is absolutely wonderful. This is why so many people love the HD600 bottlehead crack combination, because bottlehead crack is an OTL tube amp that adds a little bit of warmth, but still maintains those nice highs that HD600 has. And tubes do tend, like I said, to add a little bit of soundstage in some cases. And in this case, it was a very, very good addition. Uh, on this specific one on the front, there is a stepped attenuator right here, um, a quarter inch output, and on the back there is a power switch and RCA Zen for line level input. Um, there's not output for a pre, though I'm sure that that is an option. You could possibly do that. Uh, but this is a pretty straightforward uh, amplifier. The power supply is also an external uh, power brick that you would run through an IEC cable into your wall. Didn't really have any issues with that. Um, in some cases, I'd set my uh, cell phone next to it and get some microphonics where you can hear like t -t 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 -t, stuff like that. That happens with almost any amp, honestly. And of course, tubes do get very warm, so you don't want to touch the top of this thing while it's on. You're gonna, you're gonna probably burn yourself. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Anyway, guys, this is the Millet Starving Student. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I know this was kind of a short one, but I really wanted to cover this thing. I think it's pretty cool. And honestly, this is a great amp for the price. I was using it side by side with my NFP11 back and forth for all kinds of different things. Obviously, the NFP11 is a little bit higher quality and a little more neutral. The NFP11 has a DAC, things like that, which is certainly justifiable as to why the NFP11 is the best value out there right now. But I see this as an excellent companion amp, especially if you want something to kind of warm up your sound and maybe enrich it a little bit. 
Anyway, guys, until next time, peace.